Hey everybody, welcome back to the, ch I was going to say table, but table. Uh, it's been a while since I posted something, and I thought today I would post something that's not on Kickstarter. Yay, something different. Uh, this is from Wargame Vault, another great source of all kinds of games. So lots of things we could talk about. This one in particular I want to take a look at was Charge Eagles Rising. It was on the front page of Wargame Vault. It's kind of pushed off to the side a little bit, but... It intrigued me, and I wanted to share it with you. I'm actually on a huge painting up my American Civil War figures uh, with all the weird light and computer lighting. You might not, wait, not but bleh, uh, English. Uh, you might not be able to see well, but like here's my uh, some Union guys I painted up recently, and I'm gonna try some contrast paint Union soldiers. I actually kind of like it. Um, I'm going to go in and, and detail them with non-contrast, but just for like the hats and uh, face and some other stuff. Contrast paints seem to work really good. Uh, but this is Napoleonics. So I was actually came here looking to see, you know, if there was any new Civil War rules. But this one caught my attention because I do like Napoleonics, uh, but I just don't have a lot of Napoleonics. But I have a buddy who does have a lot of Napoleonics, so I'm still intrigued and like to play Napoleonics. So Napoleonics, yeah. Okay, enough for that. Uh, but let's take a look here. So first of all, it says $40. That was the first thing that caught my attention. $40. Um, for forty dollars, I would expect a physical book with binding of some sort, spiral bound or something. Maybe even a little bit more for that. But I said, okay, let let's see what we have. Uh, no reviews, so no no one has really latched on to this. Well, I can't say no one. No one has left a review here yet. So to me, that that means that possibly the price point might be scaring people off. I could be wrong. Maybe this thing is selling like hotcakes and, and just no one has left a comment yet. Um, so I said to myself, well, I will do a search on the internet and find anything about this game. Re you, know, uh, a a R you know, after action reviews, something. I couldn't. Um, but it still had me interested because I always look for new stuff. So I hit the full-size review. Now, typically... When I open a set of war game rules, they're, they tend to be just black and white. Looks like there was one set I found. I can't remember the name of it, but they didn't even use a consistent font. It was like one page had this font, another page had this font. It looked like uh, some of the pages were typed up on a typewriter and then photocopied into a PDF. And then some additional stuff got added later with a word processor. And, and that had, you know, veranda or something. And, you know, like wow really and you wanted money for that so I had low hopes but as I was going through I said hey colored background it's got a nice background um, oh and it's got a consistent font so far on their uh, you know table of contents this looks good this looks good. I was happy. Okay, this is not just a, a typed out on a typewriter Xerox den. This is actually put together really nicely. And I'll show you something else I like about it. This is just, you know, the introduction stuff here. When you read through this, you find out that this game, maybe not in print, but the, the group of folks, it seems like this was put out, you know, even by, by uh, well, Uncle Duke, you know, someone wrote this, but it seems like it's been played for years and years in the local areas and um, a war game club and someone, you know, decided to put it out there. And I think that's fantastic. So you know you're getting rules that have been played extensively for years. I think some some comments and quotes I read on the internet that I could find dated back to like 2015, 2013. So this has been around for a while, at least, you know, being played privately and locally so I mean that's that's fantastic actually uh, the other thing I like too is as you get into the game itself so now we're talking game scale the chapters are color coded they don't mention color coding up here in the uh, table of contents anywhere which they don't have to 
uh, but I thought it was kind of nice that as you went down in here the side straps so uh, the side borders are color coded that would be fantastic on a print book PDF yeah still could be useful but you see then we go into another section and you got the color coded uh, for some reason to me I really like that because I, I think they did they have something similar in like um, at Sans Resultat and I've seen it in other games it might not be the whole border but section of the border to color code things I like that so I thought just on the sample this is a really well put together PDF uh, doesn't really talk a lot about the rules yet but I thought that's that's fine you know most samples are just an introduction to stuff but I was like I really want to know more because forty dollars is asking a lot of Eddie to you know shell out uh, so I said well hey there's a link well first of all I did my internet research right I was like let's go on the internet and see what I can find again not a whole lot but I did find here a website board gamer never heard of them before so boardgamer.games check them out they seem to cover a lot of stuff I looked at their home page uh, looks like they just go and pull news from all different types of hobbies together board games PC VCR consoles so you know if you're interested looks like it's a a blog that might grow into something big so you know come check them out boardgamer.games alright now here it talks a little bit about charge eagles rising so they pulled it from wargame vault and sure enough they're listing it here at twenty dollars so I would tend to believe the price on Wargame Vault because when you purchase it, it'll charge you the $40. But I think $20 would be more reasonable for a PDF. Now, I know that's always a big debate. Are you paying for the physical content, which is just a digital book? Uh, you know, but you're also paying for the time and effort and research and possibly the growth of this business. So, you know, there's always a debate on how much a PDF should cost. And I usually just compare it towards the physical book. But then people will say, well, again, even with a physical book, a physical book might actually cost like $5 to produce. But you're still paying for the research, development, layout, the teams who built it. I get it. None of this is cheap. But to me, most PDFs that I'm willing to shell out for do hover around the $20 range. I don't really think of a time I purchased a PDF for more than that. I, I may have, but uh, this I was like, ooh, if it was 20 bucks, I would have purchased it already. Um, but, you know, in an effort to do more research, going back to War Game Vault, because if you click the link here, the read more, $20, you go, oh, $20, read more. It takes you back to the War Game Vault page, and then, you know, you see the $40. So I said, okay, let's, let's be fair. Let's dig a little deeper. So you go to the publisher website. And, oh, I already had it loaded, but I guess we'll load it here. <laughs> I already had it loaded on a tab. But anyway... Uh, gorgeous website so immediately I love this this screams professional to me so you've got you know charge war games that who that's who makes it uh, you got different categories of the website and gorgeous looking pictures of their miniatures and how they use them in their game so that already looks good right this is all components from their game that's important because I did buy a set of rules recently that had miniatures that were based for another game and it said in the caption these miniatures are based for a different game and I thought hmm great way to advertise your own game within your game by showing figures that are based for another game so right away I know my brain thinks weird but I was very appreciative to see that the pictures were stuff based from the game. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit later how I know that. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit. So you got Charge Eagles Rising. So you got this nice introduction to the game. This goes back to 2015. And you can see people playing it in the garage. So for me, this says, you know, yeah, this has been played, ex uh, you know, I use the word extensively. Uh, I could be wrong, but it when you get down and you see like photo galleries and stuff, it they've played this more than once. So I was happy to see that this is a, a well-played set of rules. But what caught my attention was all the free downloadable stuff to go with the game. 
Now, somebody might say, isn't that stuff that should be included in the PDF that you purchased for $40? Eh, maybe it is. I don't know. But it's here for us to look at. And this gave me a lot of information about the game without actually seeing the rules. So we're going to take a look at it. That's where the bulk of the video is. So when I do the uh, little time stamps, we'll know we can skip ahead to this to see contents of game. All right, so we're going to take a look at this here. Unit value charts. Maybe I got to click this one. Now, it does open as a PDF right there in the browser. Problem is, I think if I try to rotate this, I hope it doesn't like flip on me because it's tablet mode. Okay, anyhow, we have here several pages. You've got your uh, 150 to 300 troops. So it sounds like, how, depending on how you base stuff, how many troops are in a unit, that gives you the size of the unit. Standard is 401 to 550 troops, which can be represented by 16 to 18 figures. And this is all using a 30 men to one man uh, ratio, it says all that right here. Uh, talks about artillery gun section sizes, and then depending on your um, uh, experience level of the troops, so veteran, elite, there's a whole bunch of values. Let's see, M, um, just to guess, I have no idea. I don't, I don't want to guess and get it wrong, but you can see that there's several stats that you would have for each type of unit. Old Guard, Guard, Grenadier, Elite, Veteran. If we come this way some more, it goes to Regular, Conscript, Landwehr, Militia, Untrained. And that's two pages there. All right, cool. Oh, here it is, right down here, Definitions. <laughs> Look, Eddie. Uh, so you got like a Morale, Close Assault Value, Worn Value, Spent Value, Broken Value. Worn and Spent, uh, and then a Broken. It... It just, uh, that automatically just gave me thoughts of um, Brigade Fire and Fury, the Fire and Fury, because they have like a, a worn, anyway, it's not the same, clearly, it just, uh, but it's got some information down here, how many fire dice you get. Okay, so that's, that's one PDF, so you can see right there they have an extensive, of course I hit the power button, hold on, I'm pulling it back up, but they have an extensive... Oh, you can see all the behind-the-scenes stuff. They have an extensive uh, collection there of unit stats. So that's the unit value charts. Player aid charts. All right, great. We can even blow that up a little bit. Uh, and these are thick with data. So I actually think I opened this one first, and I went, oh, this is a simulation game. So that, that might be important for you. If you're looking for a simulation game, this game really has that feel for me. It's deep. Uh, you got your turn sequence here, tactical phases, but look at the, all the information we have. There's your issuing orders, leader stuff, offboard force arrival, uh, skirmish combat information here on the front. You got markers, you, um, you will see there's markers, but do you mark them disordered, worn, spent, blown, suppressed? That's a whole other story there for blown. Um, charge, eagle, red. See, then we got the movement types. There's quite a bit of movement requirements or uh, maybe unit types with their movement re limitations, movement notes, going over obstacles. I mean, like um, the Gods of War game I covered on Kickstarter, you know, that I wouldn't call that one a simulationist game. That one kind of maybe borders more on like competitive gaming. And they have, well, when you cross any kind of bad terrain, even multiple in a row, you just subtract three inches from the overall movement. Here is the opposite. This is why, for me, this kind of rings more on the simulationist side of things because now you have for specific obstacle types how it affects movement. Um, that that might be right up your alley. I do have that up my alley on occasion. Sometimes I don't mind simulation if I have the time to spend gaming and following that. Sometimes I need simplicity. So for me, it just depends on the mood. Um, but it's nice to know we have the, that option here in a game. Um, you know, it goes on here, skill tests, ranged fire, artillery fire. So there's like four pages to this. Small arms fire. It's uh, it's quite a bit. Close assault combat modifiers. This isn't the first game I've seen with four player aid sheets. 
However, this is the most condensed, like this is thick with information. Um, and again, I don't think it's anything that would be completely overwhelming to someone who's had a chance to play it. I mean, even when I play Fire and Fury, I had someone go, oh my gosh, that looks so complicated. Look at all the modifiers. Well, you might look at that here and go, oh wow, look at all the modifiers. But I don't think it would be anything out of the ordinary once you've played a few times. You know, you could totally skip over all the infantry stuff if it's a cavalry versus cavalry fight, you know. Um, you learn which values to skip over when you're trying to find the modifiers you need. Uh, different results. Now see, this I don't mind at all. I like a little bit of flesh in uh, infantry or cavalry or, in, you know, that kind of combat results, especially if there's, you know, differences. Like if the loser uh, loses by a certain amount, I, I don't mind that kind of detail when you get into combat results. So. Yeah, like this This totally would not bother me too much, I think, after learning how to play the game. But again, just to show you, this is probably leaning more towards the simulation side of things. Uh, then we had nationality unit charts. Now this, I thought, was pretty remarkable. Um, again, I don't know. It says Appendix B, so it's possible that this is also in the book. But there's a lot. So you start with French... Or France, but the French, and uh, you know, you got old guard, middle guard, young guard, vis visual legion, uh, just all kinds of different units here for them. Their morale levels, their sizes, battalion size, Napoleon's battles. That's like a whole separate game. I'm not sure how, what that kind of means. Empire, maybe maybe this could be used with other game systems, because I think there is actually a Napoleonic's game, Empire, and something, and then there is actually one Napoleon's battle. So. I'm not sure if it's how you can convert those games into this system, which would be cool. Uh, but you get your fire, dice, skirmish. But anyway, so you got France, artillery for them, their cavalry, there's guard cavalry, and different type. So it's not even like, here's the guard cavalry, and here's line and light cavalry. It's actually, here's very specific units types. Yeah, very detailed. Uh, then they got leaders. And that's always important too. Uh, you know, Ed Sons Resultat also had a lot of extensive um, commander ratings and things. So this it's nice to see that here. And there's a lot. And they have several different ratings depending on what they're going to do. So just flip through. And that was just France. Then you got French German allies. And Bavaria. Uh, I think it says Saxony. Yeah, Saxony, different years for Saxony. Uh, Westfal Westphalia. I'm not a big player in Napoleonic, so I'm probably getting names wrong. Uh, Wurttemberg, Denmark, Italy, Poland, Austria. And it keeps going. I mean, there's a lot of units in here. Uh, Britain, and then King's German Legion. Just quite a bit. Yeah, and then there's leaders. France has the most of everything, but I just saw Wellington. Uh, Duke, Duke Nassau, Welberg. Where is, do they have the Duke of Orange? Is that his name? Anyway. Uh, Portugal, Spain. British allies. And it keeps going. This is near the end. I'll stop pronounce. I'll stop mispronouncing country names here. Uh, Russia. I can pronounce that one. There's Russia. Yeah, I got a little bit. Russia has quite a bit too. Where's Bagration? I just watched a thing and they talked about Bagration. There he is. Pre 1812, 1812. Anyway. Uh, and then there was a few. I just skipped past somebody here. Sweden and the Ottoman Turks in here. So very extensive unit lists. Wow. Okay. That might be right up your alley. Like that gives you enough information that if you had some kind of books with campaign information, I don't think you would have a problem playing just about any Napoleonic war with this rule set. Order sheets. Now this one was pretty simple. Of everything I've seen so far, this was the simplest. One page. Uh, you can mark down the unit, their path. So it looks like you can track orders. Again, 
going towards that simulation side of things. Here's the order they might have. And then change to the order over time based on the unit. Okay, simple. That's cool. I, I like roster sheets. I don't mind having paperwork to track games. I know some people like to have a lot of tokens on the table. Uh, you know, don't like paperwork. You know, they like tokens. Me, I, I'm, it may be in between. I don't mind having some paperwork if it will take some tokens off the game board because I like to look at the game board and just see as many miniatures as possible. You know, and I'm used to seeing some tokens, but if I can manage things on a separate sheet of paper, I'm all for it. All right, player aid cubes. Okay, so this was interesting to me. So I click the button. Here we go. <gasps> Try again. There we go. Yeah, so I was like, oh man, this reminds me of bolt action. So you're going to have these cubes you can make. Now, when I said reminds me of bolt action, only from the fact that they have dice that have the orders on them. And that's what this looks like. They call it an order cube. So it's not a dice. You don't roll it or anything like that. But it's a great way for you to put down next to the units, like what order they're doing. So again, I haven't read the rules. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they do randomly pull cubes. And you know, okay, oh, I drew a French cube. I guess I'll activate a French unit and I'll put a cube next to a French unit I want to activate. No idea. But uh, this one says the major maneuver elements for army, wing, and corps, and the maneuver elements for division, brigade, command, cube. So that's, that's why there's two different types here. Then as it goes down, there are, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what these flags would be used for, but they are clearly used for something, because here are some that's marked army for the wing, the corps, divisions, uh, down to brigades. So I'm not sure if that's supposed to be flags you can make to help identify things, but they have quite a few here. Spanish, Portuguese, Danish, Russian, um, like this says column, corps, division, brigade. Uh, even the Ottoman Turks have some. There's some for Sweden, the Prussians. Uh, and then these look like firing templates. And if that's the size of your base, then that's perfect. You can just sit that right in front of your base and then you know exactly what the firing angle. So, uh, you know, I've seen that before, that, but that's great. It's right there. So these were some additional things that you can cut out and use. I like the order cube idea, but at the same time, if if you don't need them because you can write your orders down on paper, then that's, you know, you don't have to put these cubes on the tabletop. But if you don't want to use paper, then they got cubes for you to track orders. You know, it's give or take kind of a thing. All right. So we'll go back. They had one more thing and then a player's guide. Now, this recommend that anybody who is curious about the game this is the part that you would read and I like it because even um, you know some other war games I've seen they they also have something similar where they have like a, a behind the scenes player guide which explains examples typically this is for somebody who has the game as learning the game but this goes in and gives See, it says right there, a tutorial. So this actually goes into different aspects of the game with tutorials. Uh, so like this one here, talks about passage through lines, artillery, defense support. Here's a coordinated attack example. Um, then we go down here, British special rule, and there's your arc of fire template. Looks like, uh, depending on the size of your base, they got like two bases put together to make a unit. That's Kind of what it looks like there. Uh, so I guess, you know, as long as you're consistent with basing. But anyway, so again, it's got, it looks like in-depth examples. Having never read the rules, I can't tell you how in-depth and, you know, but it seems pretty comprehensive. Calvary wave attack example. Yep, let's see. I thought there was one more. Exploitation. I don't know if that's all part of the 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 uh, cavalry wave attack, but then there's a multi-unit cavalry charge example. Yeah, with pictures. I mean, that's nice too. You know, I haven't even looked on YouTube. I wonder if if they've put anything on YouTube. Then you get into designer notes. See, it says here. 
uh, charge, Eagles Rising, had its origin in the mid to late 70s. At that time, I was starting my teaching career in northern Wisconsin. I'll let you read. But clearly, this has been a labor of love kind of project. So I'm very, I'm very happy for you to see this out. Uh, and this is uh, 2021. All right, that was the last thing that they got. So the other cool thing is here they have the photo galleries. And it's just photos. I didn't see like an after action where they described everything that happened. But you can pop up a picture. And this is how I knew that these were pictures from the game. Because this is how the units look in the player's guide with the example. So there's your order cube. There's these markers for... Uh, tracking casualties, prob probably losses. I have a friend that tracks his losses with something similar. Uh, so this could be, you know, losses. So it doesn't look like it's a base removal game. It could be wrong. could have a little bit of both. But, you know, definitely got some status markers. So that's like saying from Eddie, Eddie, I thought you said you don't like to see clutter and things on there. Well, I haven't played the game, so I don't know how important that is to the game or if some of that could be offloaded to some, some side paperwork and then you just have the figure, but there's one of the order cubes, um, there's a firing template, so that's why I was like, yeah, this is good. They're, they're definitely showing their rule set in action. All right, and then, uh, yeah, see those right there, that little black helmet, I don't know if you can see it very well where my finger is pointing, but that's actually the tip of Oh, what is it? My friend has them, they're green. And that's what he uses in Napoleon's battles when um, you take like a light casualty or something like that before you start base removal. And those were like on, they're like little pads for putting on like chairs or something. I, you know, the ends of um, like metal shelving or something. You got the little metal jaggy that sticks out. You put those little caps on it. Um, but yeah, I've seen that before. And he's got, uh, took like the uh, pipe cleaners of different colors, cut them into different sizes. You can lay those on units. I've seen that before. So, yeah. I don't know wh where the little rings come from, though, but uh, there's all the bases. Looks like they kind of stacked a couple units up there. Oh, uh, looks like a couple units are going that way. So they're, they put their labels on the back of the base. And you see a couple values there. And then. Uh, what is that? 1C. I can't read upside down. But anyway. So yeah, this is this is their game in action. So it was very cool to see, you know, everything kind of going on there. Yeah, I would love to play this. I would love to play with a group of folks like this. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. My, my buddy and I, when we play Napoleonics, it's just him and I. And we don't play large games because nobody comes to play. Um, if you ever want to come and play with us, though, you know, you'll have to rent a hotel and drive or fly yourself down. But, uh, yeah, we'd be down to play some larger battles, I'm sure. Um, but, yeah, so the game looks like there's the, there's the little cap thing again. I know I love that. Now I'm like, it just reminds me of those big bear fur helmet things, the beef eaters. But anyway, just showing you here, they got a nice gallery. There we go. Uh, now, the only problem with the website, let me try it here. My browser on the other computer, every link I tried except for galleries and home, take me home. So if I click on dealers, let me see if it works different on my laptop here. Nope. Let me try player aids. Nope. Uh, nope. Oh, it's not even taking me anywhere. Okay, how about scenarios? So this could be, this website may have just come out. So I'm not trying to bash on the website. I know that's, you know, you're like, Eddie, you're bashing their website. It could be that this website just came into existence and they're trying to get it all set up. Galleries works. So I have a feeling that this is a work in progress website right now. But I'm glad to see that they've got something to build from. Uh, but home takes you back home. That one seemed to work. Yeah, that one worked. Anyway, great website. I can't wait till they get it all put together. But you can definitely come and check out a lot of this stuff for yourself. Well, that's a really lengthy video there. But I would encourage you, come check out Charge, Eagles Rising. 
I'm going to send this video off to the publisher and see if I can get some more information I can share with all of you about this game because I'd really like to you know, see something come out from this. Uh, looks like a labor of love and I'd like to support that. Alright, anyway, I'll talk to you all later. Bye.